Oh my god, oh my god. Holy smokes, ladies and gentlemen. Did you guys know that the 2024 F1 grid had absolutely zero changes from 2023? I know, right, guys? This is absolutely insane, which is why I'm gonna yap for hours on end about the 2025 grid, where Lewis Hamilton is going to Ferrari, Max Verstappen is going to Mercedes, Carlos Sainz has the potential to go to that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call brain rot. Or in other words, the average 2025 F1 driver transfer video on YouTube. Almost every F1 channel makes a video on it, and it's honestly the most annoying, repetitive bullshit I have ever set my eyes upon. Like, I'd understand, you know, if it's just one or two videos talking about it, but if it's the same fucking shit over and over again, talking about some bullshit rumor with no evidence whatsoever that their entire source is just straight up, trust me, bro, and their driver predictions end up being wrong almost every immediately kindly shut the fuck up not to mention these videos have info you could read over an instagram post but it could still go up to 40 minutes long and sometimes just talk about one single driver like what the fuck oh my god guys i am hearing news that max verstappen might be going to mercedes oh, oh my god what oh man i can't wait to learn more about this oh oh Man, fuck this shit. For the thousands of people who have fallen for this type of content over and over again that spirals into 15 different topics all at once where 80% of it is pointless yapping and 20% is actual content, I am here to bless you all with a very fast forward rundown with solid detail and basic use of common sense of all the possible 2025 F1 driver transfers. That's right guys, all 20 drivers and the teams they have the possibility to drive for next year what's most likely gonna happen and of course my grid prediction now i know a lot of you guys must be thinking rick 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 why do we have to listen to your f1 driver transfer video there's a ton of them out there why should we listen to you and what do i have to say well it's because i am simply better and correct fact well, who's the best driver <laughs> Alright, so Max wear a strap on. So this man right here is rumored to go to Mercedes in 2025 because Jos Verstappen has been having talks with Toto Wolf, which has led to many people, and I mean many fucking people, saying that he might end up there next year. This is a bunch of bullshit because I actually have something even better to tell you guys. You see, Max Verstappen, now hear me out right here, this is gonna be absolutely insane. He is going to Red Bull. Oh my god, I know, I know, I know. Relax, relax. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry for using common sense. Max Verstappen going to Mercedes in 2025 is like me identifying myself as a seven foot tall black dude. All right, I can only wish to look like that, such as how I can only wish Max Verstappen went to Mercedes so that F1 can actually have more competition. It would take a lot for that to happen, and even if Christian Horner sends every Red Bull employee a picture of his weenus, Red Bull would still have to completely implode on itself to even have the slightest chances of Max considering Mercedes. Or Toto Wolf, you know, offers him millions of dollars, which could happen since, you know, the last time I saw Toto, he was having fucking wet dreams about Max. That's the thing. Where does this put him? Four tenths of a second ahead of Lando Norris. You know he's tidy as around here. Well balanced for Verstappen, but I'm out, man. Sorry. <laughs> Next up, of course, is gonna be Sexo Perez. So he just has three possibilities it's either this, this, or this nothing else. If he's actually half decent this year, then a midfield team or Red Bull. He's Max Verstappen's most ideal teammate because, in order to fit into that category, you have to have one specific trait not be able to compete. And if he repeats 2023 all over again, then he's out of a seat. Ooh, I am spitting bars. Alex Albin is a bit more confusing to talk about. You know, his options are either another year at Williams, aka hell, or grab a seat at Mercedes, aka the exact same thing. Realistically though, Alex is getting another year at Williams because Mercedes needs an absolute marketing unit to replace Lewis Hamilton. Though there have been rumors that he might go back to Red Bull. If that happens, then Alex is going to a place worse than hell. So overall, the possibilities for Alex Albin are either hell, hell, or hell, but a whole lot fucking worse. Acorn. Now this is the fruit of oak trees.
Wait, wait a minute. Oh, con. Now, this is a driver that cannot get along with any human being and is the current driver for Alpine, with a lot of people saying that he might end up in Mercedes next year. <laughs> oh, man, Mercedes. Are you fucking stupid? If the odds of Max Verstappen going to Mercedes in 2025 are on par with me being a 7 foot tall African American man, then the odds of Ocon going to Mercedes are like that, but instead I claim to be a 4 meter tall Nordic Viking. Toto Wolf would have to smoke so much shit to even remotely consider Esteban. That's why his possibilities are either Alpine or fuck off. Fact. Fernando Alonso, the man who has never left his prime. As for him, age is just a number. Totally different context for Ayrton Senna. Now to see all the different possibilities for where Fernando will go in 2025, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the very consistent F1 news source, Instagram's racing.news, ladies and gentlemen, with the epic latest F1 news and live updates. Now, from what I can tell from this, guys, these guys look like the real deal. You know, they look like they, they know a lot of stuff in Formula One. So, racing news, where is Fernando Alonso going? Oh, damn. Red Bull. Now, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Alonso to Red Bull for 2025, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, never mind. They're they're saying Aston Martin now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. M M Mercedes? Oh, well, holy shit, guys. I guess Fernando is going to Mercedes now. And he's back to Aston Martin. I mean, I guess it's fine if he stays, you know. Oh, never mind. Fernando's going to Red Bull, guys. Oh, let's go. Let's fucking go. We're back in the game, baby. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Re retiring? Oh, sorry, guys. Looks like it's going to be Aston Martin again. Wait. Wait. Guys, I think it's Red Bull now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there are more rumors and speculations on this Instagram account than actual F1 news. What? What is this? Where's the news, guys? Where's the news? It's all just rumors. What the fuck? Just to cut it short, all the possibilities for Fernando Alonso in 2025 are bam, 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 bam. And yes, I know. Holy shit, that's a lot. This man is just straight up an enigma. There is no telling which option he would go for. So if anyone's telling you that they know where Fernando Alonso is going to end up in 2025, I can sniff out that bullshit faster than sniffing out Charles Leclerc's helmet sweat. Pause. All of Fernando Alonso's possibilities have a 25% chance of happening across the board. It's too early to tell what's more likely since this is more complicated than Danny Kvyat's love life. George Fumble and Mercedes, Charles Leclerc and Ferrari, Lando Norris and McLaren, Lance Stroll, fuck you, Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari, and Oscar Pastry in McLaren. What all of these guys have in common is that their situation is less complicated as they're already set for 2025. But notice how I covered six drivers in just a matter of seconds. Now you see that right there, guys? I just covered six Formula One drivers in like 20 seconds, while there are literally videos taking 15 minutes just to talk about one single dude. Like how does one become such a professional yapper? Get that shit out of my face. I am simply better and correct. Fact. Carlos Heinz is up next, and he is going to bumfuck Idaho. I have no idea where this man is going to end up in 2025, guys. He is just as much of an enigma as Alonso, as there's no guessing where he'll go next year. But of course, there are still a ton of rumors that are going around the F1 community that are going like this. Oh, Carlos is going to Red Bull, guys. Oh, no, maybe they're Mercedes to replace Lewis. Wait, no, maybe he could also be going wait, to Sauber. You know, no, that no, could also be possible. He's going to Aston Martin. Wait, to I think it's Fernando Alonso. Don't you shut the fuck up! Wait, 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 Thank you, Professor X. I could not have said that any better. You see, all of these teams that Carlos Sainz can sign for can possibly be true. But no. If there's anything I know, Carlos Sainz, he is gonna be going to bumfuck New Mexico. Ooh, I am spitting bars again. Carlos Sainz's options are simply all this. It is a lot. He's a very talented driver who should have gotten credit a lot earlier, but I'm very sad to report that Carlos not getting a seat for next year is a harsh possible reality. Like, I would count that as a crime if he does not have a seat for 2025. Although, I would personally prefer this to happen though.
the midfield clusterfuck. Now this side of Formula 1 is absolutely insane. You cannot watch the sport without missing the midfield. They are absolutely jam-packed with so much action and it's honestly one of the best categories in the sport right now. Sure the top step may not be so entertaining but the midfield is simply unmatched. They have so much action and you just cannot miss out on it. The midfield is like nothing else. And while I am going to talk about the drivers, you can't ignore the action. The points, these two. Kevin Magnussen, who are side by side. Albon goes. That is a tap. What a leap move there. Pass, lap after lap. Magnussen doesn't want to give it up. Brilliant racing. Decent chance to come alongside, and there it is, the touch. Now the drivers who fit in this category are the drivers who have the same three options. Either stay in their seat right now, spend another year in the gulag, aka the midfield, or get booted off completely. Here are the guys who fit in this category. If you're mad that your favorite driver is in here, it's not because I'm wrong, it's because you were probably delusional from the start. All of these drivers share the same three possibilities. All around the corner, these guys all share the same exact options. Although, these two are probably just gonna have this option. First, we have Pierre Gasly. He's a very talented, underrated driver, especially in his AlphaTauri days. But... He made a deal with the devil, and from what it looks like, he has no other choice than to be a part of the Baguette Special Operations team. I'm sorry, Pierre, but hell is your only option. When drivers take a break from Formula 1 and then come back, they are usually fresher and feel almost unrecognizable from before. Fernando Alonso is one of those examples, along with, uh, um, uh... Yeah, I think that's the only driver I can think of right now. But Daniel Ricciardo also took a break and came back exactly the same. You guys have no idea how much I love this guy's personality, but with his performance in 2024 so far, I'm surprised he isn't out of a seat yet. He's consistently getting outperformed by Yuki in almost every race, so I'd say he'd be lucky if RB or any other team picks him up for 2025. Like, the only thing keeping him in is probably the fact that he's a marketing machine. Dude. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Those were the words uttered by George Russell after crashing in Australia 2024. <laughs> But we can also hear those exact same words the moment Logan Sargent enters an F1 car. This man, despite actually knowing what a kilometer is, doesn't know the basic concept of driving without crashing. His options for 2025 are this. Nothing. With that kind of performance on track, you don't get to choose your fate. Nico Hulkenberg, Kevin Magnussen, and Valtteri Bottas. Now these are drivers that have performed okay this year, but are severely held back by their team. Valtteri, after putting in some solid laps, gets all of his work thrown away after Sauber pulls off a 30-minute pit stop, and Nico and Kevin have to deal with driving a Haas. That on its own is already challenging. Then we finally have Yuki and Joe. Now these guys are likely staying in their respective teams or maybe a surprise move from Yuki can happen and Joe could also not have a seat next year. But still, in terms of how fucked he is, certainly not as much as these two. Alright, so now we have the outliers. You know, these are the guys who are not exactly on the grid right now, but could potentially have a seat in 2025. Although, this requires, you know, maximum levels of delusion and tomfoolery. But I'm just gonna put all of these guys and their possibilities on screen right now. Notice how I could have easily made this entire section a 15 minute video, but I chose not to. So you're welcome ladies and gentlemen for doing the absolute bare minimum of not wasting your time. And with that being said, we can now head to the final stretch. My 2025 F1 grid prediction. Here it is ladies and gentlemen, take your time to soak it right in. Please ignore the fact that it goes against every single point I just made in this video. This grid prediction is the way that it is because of delusion. But one of the factors that make this one of the most accurate grid predictions you'll ever see is because I am simply better and correct. Fact.